Hello everyone, welcome back to the Capablanca Saga. We are back at the 1914 tournament of St. Petersburg, and uh, so glad that uh, a lot of you have caught this. I, I didn't mention it in the previous video uh, as I was too busy seeing who's who and uh, what uh, great quality the photos were. Uh, but yeah, uh, in this photo you can see how Capablanca is really giving Lasker uh, the look uh, and also not just in this photo but if you <laughs> look at this photo uh, it's really like you're going down uh, and uh, I don't know if uh, I, I've heard somewhere that in uh, the really old photos where the eyes weren't really uh, caught or they were just uh, you know blurry or something that they would uh, later redo the eyes so maybe maybe Capablanca isn't uh, actually giving Lasker the stare maybe it was added afterwards but uh, if not he, he really does seem to be doing it uh, and uh, yeah okay Frank James Marshall is definitely looking at uh, at the photographer and Alehin uh, looking at some something in the back, but uh, Capablanca definitely giving Lasker the stare. Uh, but okay, uh, in this game, Jose Ruel Capablanca, this is the second round of the 1914 St. Petersburg tournament, uh, faces his old rival Frank James Marshall, uh, who is, uh, well, uh, one of the people that is uh, uh, mostly to thank uh, uh, that Capablanca was even able to play in the 1911 San Sebastian tournament, and that uh, his career took su such a huge sudden leap. Uh, if you remember, he, uh, Capablanca defeated Frank James Marshall in a match be, uh, prior to the 1911 San Sebastian tournament uh, with eight wins and only one loss. And uh, in, in, during the San Sebastian tournament, we skipped the game. It was a really short draw uh, just out of the opening. So uh, very interested to see how this game will turn out. Uh, like we said, Capablanca has the white pieces and he opens with e4. Uh, we have e5, knight to f3, and knight to f6, the Petro defense, and uh, if you've seen the previous video, we mentioned that Capablanca uh, spoke very highly of Paul Morphy, and that he said that uh, Morphy's ideas with white uh, against the Petrov uh, are still considered uh, in those days by Capablanca and Lasker uh, to, to be the best continuation for white. Uh, so, knight captures on e5. This is the classical variation, and it's still uh, being played today. Uh, Capablanca, uh, sorry, <laughs> uh, Fabiano Caruana employed it uh, very nicely with the black pieces. Uh, we have d6, uh, knight back to f3, and now knight captures on e4. Uh, we have d4, and now black wastes a tempo as he already played d6. We have d5, but it doesn't really matter as white already played with the knight. Knight captures on e5, and knight back to f3. So it's not really that uh, that big of a waste of a time. Uh, bishop to d3, and now bishop to d6. And here, today, you would most likely see castle in here, but uh, uh, then Capablanca played c4. And here, black could continue in various ways. He could play c6, he could castle, uh, but this uh, early c4 idea uh, leaves open uh, an opportunity for, uh, for Frank James Marshall to play this bishop to b4 check. And with his knight uh, being on e4, this allows him to exchange a fairly, uh, a lot of pieces, which Capablanca doesn't mind. Capablanca always, uh, you know, welcomes tra trading pieces and uh, going straight into the endgame. Uh, but here it, it mostly favors black and it really just uh, oversimplifies the position for black. Uh, we have knight b to d2. Uh, of course, you cannot go knight to c3. Uh, this loses pretty much instantly as you would lose the exchange here. Uh, but okay, knight b to d2, and now we have castles by Marshall. Uh, we have castles by Capablanca, and now knight captures on d2. Here, Frank James Marshall is able to exchange a few of the pieces. Bishop captures, queen captures, and now knight to c6. Doesn't bother himself with this c6 uh, uh, move. Uh, and here, rook f to e1. Here, if Capablanca wants, he could play a close position with c5, but he chooses a rook to e1. Uh, we have bishop to g4, now threatening to capture on f3, and now uh, knight goes to e5. There is still no threat of knight captures on d4, uh, as bishop captures on h7 is always an idea. So knight to e5, attacking the bishop on g4, and now knight captures on e5. Uh, rook captures on e5, and now comes d captures on c4. Bishop captures on c4, and now queen to f6. Uh, uh, now, uh, with the idea of bringing to this rook over to d8 to pressure the d4 pawn, so first rook 8 to e1. Capablanca now doubles up rooks on the e file, and now if you look at this position, uh, the material on the board is equal, there is a small difference, uh, Marshall has only two pawn islands, Capablanca has three pawn islands, uh, and the exception is he has an isolated d pawn, which can be a weakness, but it can also be a strength, it Defend, uh, depends on how you play, play your game. 
Uh, first, rook a to d8. Now, both the queen and the rook are pressuring the d4 pawn. It seems that the rook on e5 cannot move. Uh, but Capablanca finds a very nice way to move it. Not the, the most precise way to continue playing this, but uh, definitely the most interesting way. Rook to e7. Here, Capablanca offers the d4 pawn. And indeed, if you captured it with the rook, uh, then... Uh, white can win the game instantly. It's a very nice tactic, so feel free to pause the video and try to find what Capablanca had in mind here. Uh, I'll give you a couple of seconds. As usual, uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations, you are an excellent winner of games. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, the move is Rook captures an F7. And now you can see that uh, black white is threatening all sorts of discoveries with the bishop on c4 eyeing that king on g8. Uh, if you capture the bishop, then of course you lose the queen. And if you capture the queen, then you get a rook captures on f6 with check. There is nothing black can use to uh, eliminate the bishop uh, on c4, which is the piece that gives the check. You can give up a few of the pieces before uh, resigning completely, but the game will end after king h8 and rook captures on f8. This will be checkmate. So this is uh, the general idea. On the other hand, if you capture with the queen, this is possible, but then the queen captures, rook captures, and again, you get rook captures on c7, uh, where you would have the exact uh, same material on the board. White would have some lead in development, but still overall uh, a, a better position for white. Uh, hard to say if, if you could actually push for anything here. Most likely not. Uh, but, okay, Marshall finds a different idea. He plays bishop to e6. Uh, prevents any ideas uh, Capablanca had of capturing an f7. And also he traps Capablanca's rook here. And now this was Capablanca's idea. Uh, rook captures an e6. We have f captures an e6. And now the other rook captures an e6. So why did Marshall allow this? His queen is under attack. After he moves the queen, uh, he will be... Uh, treated to all sorts of nasty discoveries after the rook moves as the bishop uh, is once again x-raying the king on g8. So what was his plan here? Uh, it's interesting, if you play something like queen to f7, seems like a reasonable move. Uh, if the rook moves, then you simply grab the bishop on c4, but then white has this rook to c6 move, uh, opening up a discovered attack and also defending the bishop. And here, uh, black would have to go for b captures on c6, and after white grabs the queen, rook captures on f7, we would have a queen against two rooks, and after queen c3, uh, you would have rook f to d, uh, d7 going after the d4 pawn, queen captures, rook captures, and then after g3, uh, defending against any back rank weaknesses, you would have this endgame where white is um, a queen against uh, two rooks and up a pawn, and uh, the, the two pawns are very easy targets for the white queen, so white would definitely have the advantage here. Uh, but Marshall had a different plan. He played queen captures on d4, and this is the best way to go about it. Uh, now, you can't uh, do any discoveries. Now, rook to c6 check doesn't really do anything because of queen captures on c4. Uh, you just grab the bishop and you don't mind this. Rook captures because the rook captures queen and then black is just up a whole rook. Uh, so, after this queen to d4, Capablanca found queen to d6. Uh, block the rook's attack towards the queen on d2. And also, there is a discovered check now. So, what do you do here? Uh, we have ro queen captures on c4 by Marshall, and now comes rook captures on d8. Uh, rook captures on d8, queen captures on d8 with check, and now queen to f7. Capablanca plays queen to d7 check, and here we have king to f6. Uh, Marshall could go back and uh, go up for some repetition of moves, but Marshall still wants to play this game. King to f6. Uh, and now we have g4. Capablanca offers the a2 pawn. To perhaps uh, trap uh, trap the uh, Marshall's king on f6, and uh, oh, maybe he's hoping he can go maybe some uh, h4, g5 ideas and, and see what happens. And Marshall calculates precisely. He grabs the a2 pawn and doesn't see a way Capablanca can win this. Uh, we have queen to d8 by Capablanca, not grabbing the c7 pawn immediately. First, uh, he wants Marshall to go back, and then he wants to capture the pawn with check. Uh, but Marshall goes all the way to g6. Uh, we have queen to d3 check now, uh, for forcing the king back. Uh, if you try something like king to h6, there's still not a lot of white can do to trap the king. Uh, but uh, you don't want to lose something like h4, your king would feel very uncomfortable there. Uh, so king back to f7, and now we have queen to f3 check. Now Capablanca connects the check and will grab the b7 pawn, which will also protect the b2 pawn. Uh, we have king to e7. Queen captures on b7, now protecting the pawn, and now queen to c4. Here, uh, Marshall uh, defends this c7 pawn and also uh, threatens to capture the g4 pawn with check. So, Capablanca defends it. We have h3. 
Uh, and now king to d6. Uh, we have b3 now, attacking Marshall's queen. Uh, queen to d4, now this pawn is defended, this pawn is defended by the queen, everything is defended. And queen to a6 check by Capablanca. We have c6, uh, and now queen to b7, uh, pressuring the, the king side pawns, even for the time being, uh, all of the pawns are, are, are defended. Uh, we have a5 by Marshall, uh, pushing his past pawn, but also limiting the mobility of white's b pawn. Uh, we have queen to b8 check, king to d7, and here Capablanca repeated queen to b7 check. We have king to d6, queen to b8 check, and king to d7. And it was in this position on move 35 that uh, Jose Ruel Capablanca and Frank James Marshall uh, agreed to a draw. So as you can see, after that match against Frank James Marshall, uh, which Capablanca won 8-1, to but if you remember, if you were following the saga from the beginning, uh, you know that Capablanca was leading 7-1, to and then you had a series of, of, I believe, 10 draws, or maybe not 10, but a, a huge series of draws, before Capablanca eventually won the last game and uh, got the result 8-1. to Then they uh, all uh, again met... Uh, in the 1911 San Sebastian tournament where they also made a quick draw and here it wasn't a quick draw 35 moves and a fighting draw both players uh, tried a lot uh, but in the end uh, you know it's always nice to see to see a fighting draw uh, but yeah uh, that's round two of the 1914 St. Petersburg uh, chess tournament uh, like we said uh, we have a single round robin where all of the players will compete if you if you haven't seen the previous video here are all the players that will compete here and then uh, uh, five of the players that do best uh, will continue in the second part of the tournament where five of them will go into a double round robin to see who is the true champion. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. I, d I decided not to skip it even though it's a draw. I know some of you don't like draws, but we already skipped the game against Marshall uh, in the San Sebastian tournament. So I decided to show this one as it wasn't uh, just like a, a draw out of the opening. Uh, so, and it's also a nice uh, piece of history as, you know, Capablanca and Marshall really do have a, a long history. Uh, so yeah, and I do hope you're enjoying the Capablanca saga so far. Uh, I would like to thank Mario and Sinosa, uh, Tony Clements, uh, Vivek Gandhi, Matt, Matt Edwards, and uh, Alan Black for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, uh, hopefully with some more interesting content, uh, most likely continuing the Capablanca saga, as it really is a, a vast saga. Uh, so yeah, uh, thank you all, and I will see you soon.